Hi, Dan here. Hope you're doing really well. I recently did a video on intervals, and if you want a refresher on that or you're new to intervals, I recommend you watch that one before this one. Because in that one, I went up to the octave, and in this lesson, I'm going to show you beyond the octave, the extended intervals and what you can do with that. So to illustrate this, I'm going to use a D Dorian mode, which is just the notes D to D. And I'm going to show you this pattern uh, where we go beyond the octave. So just, that's just a two octave D Dorian scale. And, and really, to, to understand intervals, you just need to know the numbers of the notes within the scale. There's not really that much more to it. In that first video, I go into major and minor intervals a bit more, but we have the octave here. The note after the octave, you just number it. Octave is eight, the next one is nine. And the ninth is just the second note up the octave. The rule here is that you just take the lower note, so second, you just add seven on, and that's how you get to the, the extended interval of that one. So that's the ninth. And what you really want to do is to learn patterns on the bass. So when you have your octave, very simple, we've got the D on the 10th fret of the E string. And if you go two frets across this way and two strings down, that's an octave. You really need to know your pattern. So down here, the first to the second note is like, is that distant. You got a little gap of a fret between those two notes, the D and the E. And it's the same here. Here's a way you can practice that. I'm just going from the root to the fifth, then playing the octave with my third finger and sliding into the ninth, and then back to that octave. You can move that around. That's something that you hear a lot of, just, and I, as I do a lot of that in my playing, is to go from a ninth to an octave. I'm not really thinking about it too much. It's just something I've heard and I like the sound of it. So if we carry on beyond the ninth, we get the tenth. And all it is, is the tenth note in the scale. It's the third up the octave, the minor third up the octave. It happens to be on the same fret as the root note, just um, on the G string. You can play a nice chord with this. I'm barring, I'm using my first finger for the root and the minor tenth. You can add a fifth in, which is the twelfth fret of the e str A string, sorry. And you get a nice minor chord. Add that ninth in that we just played before. You're probably not going to really play like that as a bass player. But you can play the notes separately, arpeggiate them, and you suddenly get something that sounds a bit more like a bass line. Notice if you use this ninth and the minor tenth, they're semitone apart. It sounds really tense if you play it together. It's going down the notes of the scale there. You can get some really sophisticated, melodic sounding bass lines when you use these upper intervals. Let's move on. So we've got the 10th, 11th is after that. That's the fourth up the octave. When I'm playing bass lines, if I'm making something up a bit like that, I'm not thinking, oh, that's an 11th. I'm not thinking in the way that I'm explaining this to you. I'm explaining this to you because I think it's a good thing to, to know where an interval is, what it's called and what it sounds like. But I don't want you to become too obsessed with it. You know, when I'm playing like a really simple minor pentatonic scale, that note on the 12th fret of the G string is, is the 11th. But I'm never thinking that. I just know that it sounds good. I know where it is. So blues stuff sounds good with that. And it fits to this Dorian. So I'm just thinking more along those terms. It fits and it sounds good rather than intervals. But, you know, this is an interval lesson, so we'll carry on. 
This is now on the 14th fret of the G string. It's the 12th, which is a fifth up the octave. Here I'm using a pull off and a hammer on. So I'm using articulations to try and organize these notes into something that sounds good, something that sounds musical. The sixth up the octave is the 13th. And here's something I want to show you. If you go back to the root note, go back to the D, and we stack notes in thirds. This is an arpeggio. So I'm going to go 1, 3, 5, 7, 9, 11, 13, like this. If you look very closely, you're playing the notes of a scale just stacked. See, all the different notes in the D Dorian scale are like that. So. You can practice it like that just to get get your ear around this as much as your fingers and then you can then you can play different notes within that so you don't have to start on the root. I don't have any chords going on in the background but this is a D minor chord. So over a D you can get a drone play a D over a D drone and practice this over that. If you move chromatically between the intervals, it will sound a bit jazzy. Add in some blue scale, you sound a bit bluesy, you know. But certainly, I think that you can come up with a lot of melodic ideas by using these upper extensions. Let's come up with a really, really simple bass line. We don't have to use all these intervals. Let's go. Yeah, that'll do. Okay, so I'm going root to the octave. There's a ninth right there, which just happens to be on the ninth fret of the G string. And then I'm coming down to the minus seventh on the tenth fret of the D. And that's the fifth, which leads nicely back to the beginning again. I just went from a D minor to an A minor. So I'm just going through chords here. They all are the same chord, so I can use the same shape. And this is the idea here. You can start to, to use these upper extended intervals in your playing. You can use them in chords too. So let's take a key. I'm going to go to the key of C major. I'm going to use that. That's a sus2 shape, which is just a root, a fifth, and that ninth, okay, which is the two up the octave. That's the that's the sus2 part of the chord. So I'm going from the root note, C, and doing this shape here. Going to A, doing the same shape. And then eighth fret of the A string, same shape. Reminds me of how you can use a tenth. I was talking about uh, the Dorian before, and that's a minor mode. This gives me an opportunity to talk about the major tenth. That's just the tenth note of the major scale, which is the third, major third up the octave. Walk on the Wild Side does something a bit different to that, but um, if you go on to the eighth fret of the E string, that's C, the major tenth is one fret higher on the G string. And if you go all the way to the 13th fret, the F, you do the same shape, you, even two frets higher. That would be a tenth, that's a double stop when you've got two notes at the same time. Double stops you can use, double stops and chords, you can use these extended intervals.
that's a C7, which is just a root note, a minor seventh, and that major tenth. So I hope that gives you a little bit of an insight into these intervals beyond the octave. Really, just know any scale or mode uh, beyond an octave. Know the pattern really well. And know that it's exactly the same notes, except the numbers differ. Once we get to 8, the octave, it starts to go 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. And you'll see that, that exactly the same way that you have the patterns it, within an octave, you have the patterns when you go when you use these extended intervals and you can start to, to really expand your playing and also expand the fretboard a little bit when you do this. I'll put a link to the PDF below so you can check out all those shapes and learn them and try and put them into your bass lines. But if you do have any questions, let me know. Otherwise, please do subscribe to the channel. Have a great day and I'll see you on the next video.